Hello and welcome to the first in my series on how to produce a GPX synchronized video file. Now what we're going to cover in this first video is how to trim the GPX file to fit your video segment. And the reason we're going to cover this first is it will show you some of the things you need to aim for. So when we go over how to record the actual video when you're out and about cycling, we'll know what to aim for. And here I've got my GPX file loaded into a program called GPS Prune. Now that's very easy to get hold of. You just search for GPS Prune and it will be one of the first hits. So you just scroll down to download and you can download a Java file here. And to run that, you just double click, assuming you have Java installed. If you don't have Java installed, you need to search for Java and install that. And then it will just be a case of double clicking. So we've got a ride here and I've got to eliminate all the segments of the ride that aren't included in my video segment. And I took the video on the second to last lap and I've got a lot of excess data here. So I need to delete that. And if you've been recording with a device with a barometric um, elevation recording function, it will have hopefully a nice elevation map along the bottom here and you'll be able to pick out landmarks using that. Unfortunately, the atmospheric conditions at the time of this recording um, caused the elevation data to be slightly off. So I'm just going to guess and I'm going to click there, maybe a little further back. So I know the start is here. So if I just click just a little further back here, there we are. So I'm going to cut out a lot of the preceding laps. And as my lap is the second to last lap, I know I'm just going to cut out those ones before. So I'm going to use select set range end and click that. And everything before that will be selected. And I can delete that here. By the way, if you don't have the map up here on GPS Prune and you've got a blank slate here, you can just click the map button here. So now I've cut that down nicely, but I think I can cut more out because I've got more than more than two laps here. So let's zoom out. Let's maybe just cut out this. And let's zoom in here. Okay, so I have I should probably undo that. I'm not quite sure what I've got. Yeah, I've got an extra lap. Okay, so I'll just be conservative and delete that there. So let's zoom in here. And now I've only got two at my start point. So this is where I started at a road here. So uh, what I did to record was I looped around and came out here to start the video. So I looped around past the start point where I wanted to start. So that's my start. So this other lap must be the final lap. So let's delete this. So I'm going to set range start and I'm going to delete there. Okay, so now I have just two laps here and I just want to delete this extra bit before the start. So I'll delete my lap round there and I will set range end there that selected everything before there we are I've got a single lap that's perfect so that's almost good enough but the problem here is that I don't know quite where I started and where I ended now when you're recording a video what you want to do is you want to choose a, a start point of your video that is easily recognized on a 2d basic map without satellite imagery. So let's say this track here, that's that would have been an ideal point to start, but I actually didn't want to start there. So I started further on and that makes my life a little bit harder. If you can choose, as I say, an easy to identify point, what you want to do is you want to loop around it. You want to then clip in, cycle and cycle past that point with both your video and your GPS device recording. So you're not going to start off, get video of you clipping in and so on. You're actually cycling past the point you want to start. Now, if you find that the point you've chosen, you thought it was going to be easy to identify on a 2D map, 
but you find out it's not, what you then need to do is to identify it on some other imaging. So we're going to use some satellite imagery. So that also is easy. What we're going to do, we're going to uh, export this GPX and it's important here that I choose UTF-8 here. And I'm going to call this Betsanger. There we are. And we're exporting track points, including timestamps and copying source exit. XML and the encoding is UTF-8. So I'm clicking OK here and I'm going to call it that. I've already uh, got one there. I'm just going to overwrite that there. So what I want, then want to do is I want to visualize this another way. So I'm just going to load a GPX file here and I'm in the wrong spot here. So I want to come down here and here. There we are. So I've loaded that file and we're presented with a map straight away. Now, where am I loading this? I'm loading this into GPX Magic. And this is a very powerful program. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description below. You can do all of these steps in GPS, GPS, uh, GPX Magic, but I'm showing you GPS Prune because that's a really easy way to do things. And it's a really easy way to do later steps as well. So I'll just show you that we can now visualize a satellite map here. And my start point will be this tree here. So if I just click there, I can see that one, two, three, four, five, six points are before the, before the tree. So if I go back to uh, GPS prune, I can start at the beginning and I can delete the first six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my start. And obviously this will, this is going to be my end. So I don't need to do anything more than that. And I just need to click start a range and then delete the points beyond that. So I now have a, um, a GPX file that starts where I started the video, which was at that tree. Now there are many other ways to do this. You can use other programs. This is GPS Track Editor. Um, this is QGIS, which is actually the program I use the most for uh, my my uh, file manipulation. And uh, as I showed you, I showed you um, GPX Magic here. Uh, I can quickly just delete that point there by dropping a purple marker and heading back with the orange marker and delete between those points. And then I can do the same here. I can drop a purple mark, lift purple marker, drop it again, and then I can uh, drop the orange and delete between those points. Now, this, when I export this, I will not have any timestamps if I export it from uh, GPX Magic. So I'll have to add timestamps in and that's a later video. But if we do it in GPS Prune, then we're going to retain our timestamps. So with a very simple um, GPX file and with not much editing to do, uh, I'm using GPS Prune here. As I say, many other ways to do it. We'll cover a lot of them later in our more advanced videos. But for now, uh, this is how you trim a GPS file. If you found this useful, please hit the like, please subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming on how to produce GPX synchronized video files. So thank you for listening and I'll see you again next time.